you know, what was really nagging at me was that we need to get after this buck. This is our guy now. Forget going across the river, which I wasn't really keen on anyhow. We're going after this buck. So we bailed out of there. So we get around the other side and we get into position and we're pretty sure we know where this buck is. There's some nice cuts in the terrain and we figured that they've dropped down into one of them. So we start working, start looking around. And I mean, half an hour goes by and there's no deer. This is like six deer and they just disappeared. And so we're kind of figuring, what, what are we gonna do? Did they just bail out of here? Should we go back and try to get on another deer? And we were just kind of wandering around, doing a little bit of glass, and then all of a sudden, psst, psst, Gordon. And I look over, and I can see Ryland's on something. So I hurried over there and got on the sticks as quick as I could. And, and Ryland said he'd seen a doe and a spike buck, but he was pretty sure this is the group that we had seen, and that big buck was down in there. And sure enough, about the time he said that, oh, there he is, he's right down in the bottom. I saw the big guy come up out of the bottom, but you know, hunting with a camera always has its problems. My cameraman was on the tripod, but he was a little bit lower than me. And even though I could see the buck, had him in my crosshairs, he didn't have the shot. So I had to wait. And it was probably the longest five or six seconds of my life as this buck came up out of the draw and started up the hill. Probably, I'm guessing he was 200, 225 yards away. 